In the Pollution Solution Activity, students, acting as owners of companies, engage in a market for tradable pollution credits, or what has commonly become known as a cap-and-trade program. To begin preparation, determine how many towns and firms you're going to need. Students will be divided into towns of 9 to 12 students, and then in each town they are divided into three companies, with three to four students in each company. So for a class of 30, you would have three towns, but in a class of 20, you would only need two towns, each town with its own company A, company B, and company C. Keeping the size of the towns and companies small is important. In a small company of only three people, it's more likely that each student would be a part of the discussion and the decision-making process. Prepare a stack of materials for each company. The stack of materials should include three or four copies of the roll card for their company, one copy of the accounting sheet for their company, a couple of blank checks, a calculator, and the correct number of pollution credit slips as explained in the teacher guide. Use the teacher guide for this lesson to determine how many pollution credit slips to prepare for the size of the class that you have. The credit slips are pre-printed in denominations of 5,000, 1,000, and 500 ton credits. Since the roll cards are different for Company A, Company B, and Company C, it helps to copy them on three different colors of paper. Likewise, the accounting sheets are specific to each group, so if possible, copy them on the same color paper as the roll cards. Don't let the number of pieces to this activity overwhelm you. Just plan for some extra preparation time the first time you run it. Once you've prepared the simulation pieces, you can use them over and over again. Once the students are divided into towns and seated with their companies, present the problem. You are going to play the role uh, with your team, with your table. You represent a firm. And we have a pollution problem in our town. So I'm going to set the stage with you if you want to follow along up here. Here's the problem. In the process of producing goods and services that are valued by the people in your region, three firms in your town emit into the air a total of 90,000 tons of yuck. So this represents a town, and this represents a town, and in each town we have three different companies, three different firms, okay? But our towns are somewhat close together, we're kind of part of this region, okay? The problem is the federally legislated allowable level of yuck emissions, that's the kind of pollution that you emit, yuck, the allowable level for your region is 45,000 tons per year. So we'll say 45,000 tons for this town, 45,000 tons for this town. Yuck emissions are monitored and measured by the AQCC and penalties like fines and production shutdowns are imposed on non-compliant regions. So we do, it is important that we clean up this pollution. The AQCC, also known as the Air Quality Control Commission, is organized by local government officials and business owners, and they're responsible for ensuring compliance with this 45,000 ton limit, okay? The pollution must be cleaned up. The AQCC has decided on a plan that caps the amount of pollution allowed by each firm at half the level they were emitting before. The firms are issued credits for that level of pollution that they are allowed and they are now responsible for cleaning up the other half of the pollution. At this point, each company has already budgeted to clean up the other half of the pollution and the cost of cleanup to them is indicated on their roll card as well as on the accounting sheets. The challenge to each town is to clean up at a lower cost than what each firm has budgeted for. Give each company their stack of materials and place a reward in the center of each company's table. We have used cash here, but of course you could use points, candy, passes, or something else valuable to your students. Explain that the reward is theirs to keep if, at the end of the simulation, their company is better off. And by better off, we're implying that somehow they didn't have to use all the money they budgeted for cleanup, and they have money left over. Draw their attention to the accounting sheet. At the end of the simulation, their company will have to do one of three things. One, write a check to the AQCC for the cost of cleaning up some of the pollution and turn in pollution credit slips for the rest of their pollution or two, turn in enough pollution credit slips to cover all the pollution they're emitting, or three, 
write a check for the total amount required to clean up all their pollution. Make it real clear that the pollution credit slips belong to them and they are free to do with them what they choose, whether that means using them, trading them, or even choosing not to use them. Give the students time to read through their roll cards and look at their accounting sheets, then allow them time to talk to the other companies in their town. All right, go ahead and talk with your teams, read over your roll cards. Walk around and help groups. Be patient. If some groups seem confused, help them realize that pollution credits are valuable to them. Each one ton credit is worth what it costs them to clean up one ton of pollution. So, they'd be willing to sell the credits only if they could get a price higher than their cost of cleanup. And they'd only be willing to buy credits if they could get them at a price lower than their cost of cleanup. Some groups will discover the advantages of buying or selling pollution credits earlier than others, and then other groups will begin to catch on. Uh, you, do you have a, either a check or credits ready to turn into me? Okay. We want two. We want two seventy-five. All right. I'll take you out. This is You shook it. Look at this. You shook it. 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 You got all these for two seventy-five. Two checks. So two checks. So you'll subtract that out and you have a balance left. So you guys are better off. Okay, let's find out how we did here. Call time when it seems most companies have come up with a solution. Have each town explain what happened and then reward any company with a positive balance on their accounting sheet. Okay, so let's find out how we did. We're going to start with town one over here, firm A. How did you guys do? We have an ending balance of $2,500. $2,500. So you budgeted how much to clean up your pollution? We had $7,500. You budgeted $7,500 and you only used $5,000 of that. So you're better off by $2,500. Good for you guys. So do you have some credits to give to me or are you, you're paying a, to clean up pollution 100%. Okay, so we have a check here, very good. And how about company B here, firm B? When you debrief this activity, focus on these things. First, the market for pollution credits provided incentives for the cleanup to be undertaken by the firms with the lowest cleanup costs. The ideal outcome in this activity would be for companies A and B to pay to clean up all their pollution because they can do it at a lower cost than company C. In return, they can sell their credits to company C for more than it costs them to clean up. The same amount of pollution is being emitted and cleaned up, but now the cleanup is being done by those that can do it at the lowest cost. So all companies save money. Second, property rights are important to this activity because they are necessary for a market to emerge and it is the emergence of the market that allows the reduction of pollution at the least cost. When property rights are unclear, no market will develop, and the remaining options for pollution reduction are more costly. The parallel here is the property right to air. What are the privileges and limitations to the use of air, and who has those rights? Prior to the federal mandate to reduce pollution, the property rights were unclear. The mandate and the issuing of emission credits defined rights. Each firm had the right to use the air to emit as many tons of pollutant as it had pollution credits. Finally, there are some key features necessary for an emissions cap and trade program to work. The pollutant must be measurable and traceable at a low cost. Property rights must be clear, enforceable, and transferable. The transaction costs of buying and selling credits must be low enough for firms to participate voluntarily. And the rules of the game must allow, not prohibit, markets.